we're going to start off talking about kinematics. Now, one question we might have is, what is kinematics exactly? Well, kinematics is the area of physics that describes motion. So if we want to talk about a car rolling down a road, or a ball being thrown off of a cliff, or any motion whatsoever, if we want to describe it, we use kinematics. So the next kind of follow-up question to that is, what do we need to describe motion? What sorts of tools, quantities, and numbers do we use to describe that motion? Well, it turns out that there are two really important ones, and those are scalars and vectors. And there are some important differences between them. Now, scalars are quantities with only magnitude and no direction. So they only have a value. So that could be something like 10 meters or 10 seconds or a speed of 10 meters per second. Notice that none of those specify what direction. I'm not saying 10 meters to the left or right. I'm just saying 10 meters. They still have units, but they don't have direction. Now, the other end of that is vectors. If scalars don't have direction, then vectors are quantities with both magnitude and a direction. So an example with that would be 10 meters to the north or 10 meters per second to the left. They are describing a direction as well as the size, the magnitude. And normally we graphically represent these with an arrow. So Vectors, since they have direction, we need to talk about the dimensions of them. We're going to start off with one-dimensional or 1D vectors. So these are vectors that are along a straight line. They are only in one dimension. So we have this vector A here, and again, it's graphically represented with an arrow, and it's pointing in the positive x direction. So there's only two directions this vector A can go. It can go in the positive x, or the negative x. 1D vectors can only go in two directions, like left and right, or up and down, or forward and back. There's only two directions it can go. It has to stay on that same line. Now, to demonstrate this a little bit more, we have an animation. We have this car driving down a road. And let's just watch for a second. So it's driving down the road, and we are going to look at it and call it the x-axis. And this velocity is only in the x-axis. And then if we rotate it and say that the road is on the y-axis, our velocity is purely on the y-axis. It is one-dimensional. The way that we're looking at it now, the car could only be going in the direction of the y-axis or in the opposite direction of the y-axis. The entire y-component of the velocity is the entire velocity. There is no x part of this velocity. Now, if there are 1D vectors, there are also 2D vectors. These are vectors that are in an xy coordinate plane, like this one. Now, here's a vector a. It's not purely along the x direction. It's not purely along the y direction. It is a mix of the two of them. One more important thing that we use to describe this vector is its angle. So we have this angle here called theta, and it's between the vector and the x-axis. We can call the angle something else, like alpha or phi or any other name we want, but we can also label an angle between the vector and the y-axis instead of the vector and the x-axis. We just need to have a specified angle. So, if we want to look at this vector, it can be important to look at the components of it. If we ignore everything happening in the y, there's still a portion of this vector that's in the x direction. Some of this arrow is going in the x direction, and we call that the components. So here we can see that the x component, or ax, is purely along the x, and the ay component is purely along the y. And when we put them together, we get this two-dimensional vector that is, again, in both x and y, and it has this angle theta. 
So we're going to go back to our animation and see what we can find. So we have our car going down our road again, and it has a certain velocity. But now, instead of it being purely in one dimension, we're going to set up a coordinate axis so that our velocity is between the x and y axis. So again, it's not purely in the x or purely in the y. We have an angle theta. And when we do that, we can break our velocity down into its components. So when we want to know the value of our x component, how much of the velocity is in the x, we want to know if we cover up the y direction of the velocity, how much is it still moving in the x, we would multiply the number of the velocity. So if it's 5, 10, or whatever it is, we multiply that by the cosine of the angle theta. And we do that because if you remember your trigonometry, cosine involves the adjacent side. So we have our angle set up and the x-axis is adjacent to the angle. So we have to multiply v by the cosine of our angle theta. And if we want to know the y component, we have to multiply by the sine because it's the opposite. So this green arrow in the middle is v times sine theta. And we can see when we put them together and then we connect them, we get our velocity v. These are all represented by arrows again because they are vectors. And when we break them down into their components, we have two components. Some velocity going purely in the x direction and some velocity going purely in the y 